Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to Lumber, or My Lumber, Let's Make a Game. So, if you've been in there recently, you've seen me kind of building, making the building tools and the little structures like this. Um, very simple, simple design. And I tried building some stuff um, where you can just kind of come in and do like a free build with a one by one, right? But um, during my uh, live stream, the tool itself wasn't really working. So I came in that night and started messing around and found out that the reason was because my uh, little guy was not, uh, my, my tool was not working properly. And that's because we had uh, some context. So let's go over and I'll show you what I did to make this happen. So, uh, oh, by the way, I do have a temporary block cleaner. So every five minutes, the entire world will reset. Uh, I've also given the command to my admins. So like if there's um, inappropriate drawings or something like that, um, like blah, 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 somebody spells out some naughty words or something like that, the admins can come in here and remove all the blocks. Oh, no target selected. Remove all the blocks. Or they can come in here and remove a specific user's block. So choose code primate and then remove user blocks. So. Anyhow. <clears throat> Uh, that's the admin panel. Let's go to the context and grab. So, um, at the very beginning, I came in here like this, uh, started player pack, and we added a new tool. So I'm just gonna add a plain tool like that. And handle not required, requires handle no. So, that should work. So, number two. Handle is not required. Now, because I'm me and I want a handle, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a brick, just a transparent brick, add part, just like this. And we're gonna make this part um, one by one by one and transparent. So it's gonna be fully transparent, no reflectance, uh, size or size. Size is one by one by one, just like that. And we're going to rename this to handle. And go back over to the tool. Oh, you cannot see anything that I'm doing. <laughs> I just realized. Here, let me move off to the side there. There you go. Now you can see him. It's that stuff over there. So right here, sorry. Handle, transparency. And then come down here to size one by one by one by one. Go back up to the tool. Uh, make sure that you name the part handle, otherwise it won't grip correctly. And we're just gonna call this build hammer. Yeah, build hammer two. Okay, that way it's all good. Now, normally what you would be able to do is you could come in here and you could add in a script, uh, a local script. Right, and uh, tool equals script dot parent. That way you could get the tool, and then you could do something like uh, tool dot uh, activation on activation dot activated. Right, and then you could do connect function activate. Oops, sorry function activate uh, and then you would have to pass in some things arg1 arg2 arg3 something like that and then you could do like print arg1 arg2 arg3 that way you can see what those arguments are now this won't work and I'll show you why so builder hammer 2 there's no activate See that? And the reason why, if we go look at the uh, this as well, uh, we can do tool.equipped 
connect um, equipped, equipped, equipped. Here, there's no T on it, just equip. So function equip print. That worked. So whenever I go in here and I actually equip it, that worked. Times two, times three, times four, we can see the output right down there. So we know that the script itself hasn't stopped. So what's going on? Well, um, little did I realize I've already bound my click. And here's where it's at. So let's hit stop. Come over here to the context and grab. And if you scroll down to the very bottom, I've got bind actions in there already. So <clears throat> whenever there's a mouse movement or whenever there's a user input of mouse button one or a key command of the R2 button, I've already got it bound to an action called grab. So the actions of this script are affecting the local script over here. So what we have to do is we have to basically kind of do the same thing. I'm just gonna grab this whole thing, copy. And I'm gonna come over here, paste. And we're going to change this context from grab to activate. Uh, and, oops, comma. Activate. We're gonna give it a false. I don't remember why we give it a false, but we do. And then uh, we actually, we don't want this inside here. We want this inside the equip. So when we equip the item, we want to bind to our first mouse button. And then function unequip. We want to do cast unbind action activate. Oops, activate like that. So we want to get rid of it as soon as it's done. So that should be all I need. We can go and remove this because we're not we're not pulling the action from the activate. We're pulling the action from the bind when we equip the tool. So two. Uh oh, what did I do wrong? Uh, player code uh, local script attempted to index global CAS. Oh, <laughs> duh. So CAS is the um, uh, context action script. So let's see. Local cast equals game dot get service context action service just like that. So now cast actually means something. And here we go. Two. Look, yay. Activated begin, activated end. Begin, mouse down, mouse up, mouse down, mouse up. So um, the args are activate. The second one is user input begin, user input end. So if I do this, um, let's see. So activate is the name of it. We don't have to worry about that. I guess if you had more than one function for a tool, you could do that, but I'm not gonna worry about it. If arg2 equals enum, uh, user input state dot begin then um, let's see we could do a particle effect I guess particle no that's physical properties uh, let's see let's call it local part effect equals instance dot new um, particle effect, particle emitter. There we go. Particle emitter. And, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Just nice and simple. So, um, let's see. Uh, we want to do new particle. Oh, we'll do local. Local new particle new part equals <laughs> part effect colon clone 
and we are going to say new part dot name equals uh, part effect new part dot parent equals tool. So we're just going to start emitting it from our hand. And if arg2 equals enum dot user input state dot end, then if tool colon find first child part effect, then tool colon find first child part effect destroy. So basically there's a lot going on here. I've bound to my mouse click on an activate. Or no, no, I, I bind the activate when we equip the tool. Second is if the user begins to press the button, we create a particle effect and have it held like just spewing out. Then if they release it, it should look inside the tool to see if the particle effect is there. And if it is, it's going to destroy it. So that should start and stop a particle effect. Hopefully, if I did everything correctly. Now, are we still printing? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, we're not printing anything anymore, so. Here we go. It might have been argument one. Okay. Okay, stop. So, local. I guess it would be argument three, wouldn't it? The first one tells us that it's a mouse. The second one tells us what state it's in. So try again. Oh, I already pressed up five. <laughs> Silly ghost. Whoa. Okay, so if you press F5 and you're the creator of the area, you can go into free mode. That's pretty cool. Okay. Hmm. Hold on. Let's put in some prints. Hit stop. Local script. And here. Print arg2. Print start. And print end. Basically, this is this is the same basis for most tools. Okay, begin, end. So that's argument two. <clears throat> argument two. Enum user input state begin enum. Oh, it started. Okay. So, not players, we need to look at code primate over here. I have build hammer two. And when I click, particle effect is in there. Okay. And then when I let go, particle effect is gone. Look right here, just in this little area particle effect, in particle effect. So,. Hmm, stop. Particle effect, what can we have for... Oh! Part effect dot activated enabled equals true. Part effect dot color equals color three dot blue dot new blue I think that will work let's try let's try that and let's do particle effect dot velocity emission direction ooh I don't know what that is hold on let's go back in here 
uh, let's just create a new part and we're going to insert uh, a particle effect and we'll just take all of its properties um, particle particle effect so that is the base of a particle effect in fact ooh, we could do this even better so um, this is the particle emitter and what I can do ooh, that was not a fart all right, do not get me wrong, that was that was my chair. <laughs> uh, let's change the color uh, to a nice blue color, just like that. Uh, we do want it to do light emissions. Light influence is gonna be like a 100. Size, let's just do 0.5. Let's do a 0.5. Um, Z offset, I, I don't really care. Um, where is enabled? Okay. Enabled, disabled. So instead of creating and destroying, I'm going to take a copy of this, stick it into the tool, and then just enable it, disable it. Uh, lifetime is 5 and 10, which means the particles will probably, yeah, they'll start dispersing up here. Let's make the lifetime 3 and 3. So they're always three rate of 2000 can we do 2000 oh yeah that's nice um, speed is going to be zero and isn't there lock to part lock to part nice just like that okay so I really like that we're going to copy that go into our tool build hammer 2 we're just going to do paste into and we're gonna say part effect. And I need to copy that over. So, all right, we'll destroy this one. Go into the local, local, and this is going to be, oh, come on, come on. We'll take this out, equals um, tool, colon, find first child, and then in quotes, So then we don't have to look for this new thing and we can take out the print and we can take out this argument here. We want to make sure that part effect dot enabled equals false. And we don't have to have a check of any kind and we don't have to have a print. So let's just do part effect dot enabled equals true and part effect dot enabled equal oh, enabled equals false it is enabled right with a d enabled enabled yep sure is so here we go fingers crossed uh oh part effect dot enabled. attempted to local Part effect, which is nil value. Oh, okay. Instead of find first child, we're going to do uh, wait for child. There we go. Stop. And play. May have not been built quite yet. There we go. Uh oh. <sighs> Well, not quite understanding what happened there. Is it in world? Does it have to be? Okay. Hold on. Let's go to starter player. No, starter pack, build hammer. No, I need the actual person, code primate. Come here, code primate. There we go. Build hammer two. There it is. Particle effects. Enabled. And it's not on. Hmm. Enabled. All right, let's stop. Can we place this in the world? Let's see. Particle effects have to be on the handle. Correct? Maybe? 
Otherwise it doesn't know where to come out at. That makes more sense. So, tool dot handle. There we go. Play? Maybe. Oh ho ho, there it is. Oh, that looks so cool. Okay. So as you're walking, click. <laughs> Unclick. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. You just click and unclick. <laughs> Okay, so, how did I get the build tool to affect something in world? <coughs> um, where are we at? Alright, we still have eight minutes, so I'm going to show you how this works. Inside my build hammer, I've actually got a script, and then I got a server script. Uh, I also have a um, uh, remote event. So, we're going to have to add a new script. And this does have to be a server side script. We're going to destroy that. And let's just call this build hammer to local. And we'll call this one build hammer to server. <coughs> that way you know where they reside. We're also going to need a remote event. So let's just call this uh, bh2. R E build hammer to remote event inside our local we are going to have to go um, up here to the top and R E or remote event or local R E equals uh, tool dot B oops B H oh, there it is just like that this way we can call our remote event so um, down here I'm going to say re fire server fire server does that make sense and then I'm just gonna say start uh, actually we'll just say place and what I can also do here is, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see, how did I do it in the other one? Local tool script. Oh, these are the actions and the moves and the rotates. Okay, so, uh, handle action, part movement. Is this only whenever I move? Yep, action move. So I bind that as well. I'm sure that I want to do that. I guess I could. It wouldn't really matter too much. Every time that the mouse moves, we would get a new math to where it's uh, being placed. <laughs> but here, for now, <clears throat> we are going to say um, blah. Now let's let's call it something. Uh, mouse pose equals. Um, players uh, game dot players dot local player colon get mouse and then uh, that's actually just the, the mouse we want to actually get the mouse position so local mouse position and this is this is not the best programming I'll admit but it is it's me just playing so I hope I hope that's okay um, we want the mouse XYZ coordinate. So, uh, mouse dot hit. We want a fire server mouse dot hit. So, uh, mouse dot hit. So we, we're basically, we're just passing in a variable. I don't know if it's a C frame. It could be a C frame. It probably is but it should give us an XYZ coordinate. So, back over here on the 
um, build hammer2 server, which is the server script, I'm gonna put in here uh, local re equals script dot parent. Actually, we're gonna call it tool again. Tool dot um, bh2re and local tool equals script dot parent. So that should make more sense. Dot b yeah perfect. Down here at the bottom, we're gonna say re on server is it on server or on what did I do yeah on server event on server event wait it's just dot on server event colon connect uh, our server and then up here, I can do a local fire server, or function, function fire server colon uh, player comma arg1. So the first thing that gets passed into a remote function or a remote event is the person that called it. So if you get a person who's sending the signal in, it will tell us who that person was uh, and if that's not the same person who our script belongs to then we can do other things but for now this is fire server uh, and we're just going to do print arg1 this way I can see what that argument is uh oh we'll go re what oh, 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 oh. tool colon Wait for child. Oh gosh. I, eh. Double quotes. And horrible auto syntaxing. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's putting doubles in there. Stop. Now I should probably do that with the tool server as well. So, um, rs equals. Wait, that's the wrong one. Build hammer to server. There we go. Uh, tool colon wait for child. And then we can take this and put it in the middle. That way. That should be good. Okay. <clears throat> I think. Maybe. Possibly. I could be completely wrong. Or have something wrong in there. Attempted to call a string value. Attempt to call a string value. What? What? Uh, oh, hold on. Um, what did I do to fire over here? Fire server. That's what I did. RS colon fire server. In fact, that's the exact same thing that this should be calling. Oh, not here. Pfft, silly. Yeah, fire server. Now it's not hit. R E fire mouse dot hit. How did I do it in this one? Blueprint, blueprint type, vector three, which is the XYZ positions. Uh, vector three, XYZ. Okay. Here, let's uh, let's just do before we fire this event off. Let's do print mouse dot hit. That way we don't have to worry about the server yet. Attempted to pass a value that is not a function. Uh, oh, build hammer line twelve. Build hammer server, line 12. R E. Fire server. Wait, what? Oh, pfft. it is a string. I need to take out the quotes. There we go. Stop. And play. 
Oh, it's been 30 minutes. That's okay. Okay. There it goes. And yes, it does have uh, a C-frame in there. You can tell it's a C-frame because it's got the first three arguments, and then it's got three more arguments, and then it's got three additional arguments after that, which is a combination of um, Eulers and rotations and all the good stuff. So let's do this uh, just for fun instead of just the mouse hit. Okay, we're going to do... Um, do this. Um, la equals new uh, vector three dot new and mouse dot hit hit dot x comma mouse dot hit dot y comma mouse dot hit dot z comma or no comma no no comma on that one. So now we should only get the x y z coordinates. So if I just do a print blah. Yay, we just have those three coordinates, that's it. So now we're just gonna pass those three coordinates over and we could pass the C frame if we wanted to, but I'm not going to. So on the fire server for the, the build hammer, I'm going to say um, instance, uh, let's do blah over here equals instance dot new part and we're going to say blah dot color equals blue color three dot no sorry dot brick color equals brick color dot blue or black that's cool too blue there we go blah dot parent equals Workspace blah dot um, blah dot size equals vector three dot new and let's make it five uh, three by three by three. It'll be a three by three by three square blah dot position equals this is where we pass in the arg one because that is a vector three that we're passing in. So. Uh, and we actually want to make sure that this parent isn't until there. So everything that's happening beforehand, we're creating a new instance of blah or a new part local. Blah is just a part. There's no structure to it at all. I mean, there's default values and stuff like that, but we're not going to get into that. Um, brick color, we want to change it to blue. Then we want to change its size. Then we want to change its position and then we'll put it into the workspace. We don't want to do any of that before, like we don't want to put it into the workspace and then make all these changes, especially if there's like lag against the server and the, the client. Always make sure you put it into the workspace last, unless it's like a bullet or something like that. If you're doing firing things, then you should probably get that into the server as fast as possible and pass network ownership to the closest person's client. Anyhow, long story short, we can now uh, RE, which is our remote tool, uh, fire server, and then pass in la. So this should pass in the our name, which is code primate, and then the value, the first value that we have. So here we go. Hopefully it works. Ooh, yay! And this is on the server itself. Now these are not anchored. Um, so this is actually going to create a big problem later. So there's other cool nifty little things to do, but this is the premise behind the build tool that I'm creating. Right now, it's uh, they're not anchored and they're not evenly distributed. So if I wanted to, I could do a math floor and a math ceiling to get an exact placement like I did here, hold on. So see how it, it nudges one unit, no matter where it's at. And it's a very precise movement, a very precise build, kind of. It's not, it's not really that precise, by the way. But it does work. 
And hi. Hi, how are you? We can do an exclamation mark here at the end. Yay, hi. So you can come in here and kind of play with the build tool right now. Um, nothing's going to save. I haven't created any kind of save functions or anything, but I am eventually going to restrict that down so you can only build on your plots and on your bases over here. And you are gonna require money to buy your plots and bases and stuff like that. And I'm also gonna to have to fix a bunch of stuff. So there's a lot of talk about code. When's your game gonna be done? It's not. It's taken me forever because I'm basically reinventing the wheel. There's a lot of tools out there. A lot of people have said, just use FX tools or just use the F3X tools. Do that. No, that's not the point of this. The point of this is to create something completely from scratch using only the knowledge that I actually know about Lua, which is abundant, uh, and do it myself. So I don't want to use people's previous scripts. I don't want to use, like, thank you guys for the help. Um, you've, you've been a tremendous influence as far as pushing me forward to do my own thing. But a lot of you are like, Hey, I want to program for you. Let me program with you. We could split the profits 50 50. You don't have to pay me. I'll do it for free. I'll pay you to help. Whatever the condition is, that's not the point of this. I'm trying to do this 100% all on my own and it's going to take a while. I'm not a full-time developer as far as like Roblox goes. Um, I got a full-time job. I have two kids uh, uh, and I hang out with them and I hang out with my wife and my family. So wish me luck. Uh, this is not going to be a fast journey. I can tell you that right now, but I hope you hang out with me and I'll leave a link to the, the game down in the description below. Lots of different stuff that we can do. I, I love the, the effect. I should probably do something like that soon on on the actual build hammer. Can we uh, just jump up this? Have fun. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll leave the build tool in there for a little bit. Uh, actually, I take that back. I'm not going to leave that one because th those are physical objects, and that will that will take down a server. Oh gosh. Yeah, let's not do that. Thank you all for watching this episode of Let's Make a Game with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end. And I will continue to show you the, the nifty little tricks and tools that I, I'm building. And um, if you don't see me record on one of these for a little while, it's probably because I'm like trying to make a secret of some kind. Um, but anyhow, love you guys very much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Wait, where's the... This music makes me too relaxed. I need to put on some like crazy pumped up music, <laughs> you know, get me pumped up and motivated. Probably not, but I could. <gasps> Outro.